From the LUTV Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, California, this is Brief News Brief, a brief look at today's trending news topics. Proudly combating the thought police since 2016, here's your host, James Heaney. I'm James Heaney, and this is your Brief News Briefing. Republicans in a head-on collision with a trash truck? Is this a real story? Or just an analogy of how democracy is looking these days? It is a real story. On Wednesday, an Amtrak train carrying Republican lawmakers to an annual party conference in West Virginia collided with a trash truck. None of the dozens of members of Congress aboard the train were seriously injured. The collision was a huge buzzkill on the GOP's long planned huddle at the Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. Sulphur Springs? Sounds like hell to me. Nonetheless, the retreat will carry on. President Trump is scheduled to address the group Thursday. Looks like the State of the Union after party just got crashed by trash. Release the memo or don't release the memo? What's the stinking deal with the memo? On Wednesday, the FBI, the White House, and the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee were in a head-to-head public standoff over the release of a Republican memo criticizing the FBI's use of secret surveillance orders. The FBI issued a statement challenging the classified memo's anticipated release, saying, We have grave concerns about the material omissions of fact that fundamentally impact its accuracy. Basically, they're saying this memo's BS and shut her down. It's like when you order something in a restaurant and you see, Well, this sandwich has got rye bread, tomatoes, lettuce, mayonnaise. It's like a sandwich I'd like. And when it shows up, there's shit on the sandwich. Omitting the fact that it's a shit sandwich changes everything. But Trump is saying that the memo is approved to be released. FBI Director Christopher A. Wray and Deputy Attorney General Rob J. Rosenstein went to the White House Monday and urged them not to release the memo. Basically, the memo is so super secret and redacted that the FBI can't even defend themselves from the accusations without betraying their duty to keep top secret stuff top secret. Memo drama. What will happen with the memo? Is American democracy as we know it in peril? Will the FBI be compromised? Tune in next week in the Drama of Democracy. The Federal Emergency Management <clears throat> The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, said it will stop distributing food and water to Puerto Rico beginning immediately. They are cut off. This is in dire contrast to what President Trump said in his State of the Union speech on Tuesday. That was just a couple days ago. He told Puerto Ricans, we are with you, we love you, and we will all pull through this together. What? I'm confused. FEMA said that Puerto Rico is on its own. About one-third of residents still lack power and in rural areas have difficulty obtaining clean water and food. The government of Puerto Rico said it was news to them that it was shutting down. Many are worried that the Puerto Rican government will not be able to adequately distribute aid because a billion-dollar emergency loan approved by Congress to help the island with the hurricane recovery has been temporarily withheld by the Treasury Department. Cameron Yulin Cruz Soto, the mayor of San Juan, said she is still waiting for millions of dollars in federal reimbursements and that the spotty electrical grid makes it difficult to run businesses for people to work. This is bullshit. Do lost spacecrafts ever come home? Some do. On Tuesday, NASA confirmed that an amateur radio astronomer, Tilly, or Tilly, stumbled on signals from a spacecraft that had thought to have had been lost for 12 years. He was apparently on the hunt for a classified government satellite and found a lost spacecraft. So let's just for the record say, what kind of conspiracy is going on there? Lost government satellites? Nonetheless, the name of the spacecraft he found is Image, and it was a machine designed to see the invisible. More specifically, its mission was to map out the rolling sphere of electrical gas around the Earth that protects us from the sun, which we had never seen in full before. Like an ocean, its plasma ripples and flows in a solar wind. But... Like an ocean, it's also prone to storms. For five years, it astonished us. The satellite beamed back pictures of an enormous solar storm in 2000, and it allowed scientists to essentially live stream weather in space. But in 2006, 
Scientists lost contact with the satellite and declared the mission over. But Tilly found it, and NASA confirmed it. Image is back in business. Welcome home, little buddy. Federal and state authorities are moving to investigate the business of selling fake followers. You might have heard of it before. Your friends, are you buying fake followers or likes on Twitter? Or wait, you would never buy fake followers, or would you? Over the weekend, the New York Times released some investigative reporting on the industry of buying Twitter followers, and they found some pretty disturbing news. Often bought likes and retweets are robots created by existing users' personal information, meaning that your Twitter handle with one or two characters changed, like I'm at the Heen on Twitter. Go ahead and follow. Uh, you're not a robot, right? So a robot stealing my identity might be at the Bean. At the Bean account would have a picture of me, have tweets that I've made, but also use my identity to retweet. I don't know, things I don't usually retweet. Salacious things like pornographic materials. It wasn't me. It was the robot me. The robot wars have begun. In the wake of the New York Times reporting, more than a million followers have disappeared from the accounts of dozens of prominent Twitter users. Just in recent days. Busted. People are losing followers all over the place. Entertainers, entrepreneurs, athletes, media figures, everyone who bought these fake Twitter bot accounts. They're just gone. Get the robot out of here. But that's not all. The robots are not entirely gone. There's more to this than just robots stealing your identity to create fake robots. They are into politics, too. Russian robots helped swing the election, remember? Russian robots retweeted Trump nearly 500,000 times in the final weeks of the 2016 campaign. It was Russian bots that were behind the fake news like Pizzagate. Russian bots are still out there trolling Facebook and Twitter to push a Russian agenda in the United States of America. The Russian bot invasion is not over. The Russian bots that are getting hashtags like release the memo and the Schumer shutdown are trending on Twitter. Be not mistaken, the war of the robots has begun, spreading propaganda, robots pretending to be you, pretending to retweet you.